Next presentation will be lifetime medication cost savings for treating hypertension and diabetes after gastric bypass. This uh, work is by Saber Kisasi from Palo Alto Veterans Administration Health Healthcare System. Good morning. I would like to thank the chairs, the program committee, and SAGES for the privilege of being here today. We have nothing to disclose that would affect uh, the study. Obesity is on par with and will soon surpass smoking as the number one preventable cause of death with almost a half a million deaths per year. Its prevalence has increased dramatically over the past several decades to make it a true global epidemic. The most recent NHANES data puts the prevalence of adult obesity at 34% in the US. In these CDC maps, you can see the increase in the prevalence of obesity over the years. And as you can see in the maps on the bottom row, the rise in diabetes mirrors the rise in obesity. This is also true for hypertension. The annual cost of treating obesity and its comorbid illnesses in the US is estimated at about $150 billion, which is about 10 cents of every dollar spent on healthcare. This represents a significant burden on the US healthcare system and its economy. The cost of medications to treat obesity-related disease account for one-third of these costs, or approximately $50 billion per year. Ruin Y gastric bypass surgery is very effective for durable weight loss, and it results in resolution or improvement of obesity and its related illnesses. It's also been shown to be cost-effective. This chart by Dr. Shao and colleagues highlights the impact of gastric bypass on comorbidities, especially the high rate of res resolved hypertension and diabetes. A few studies have also looked at the effect of gastric bypass on drug costs. The first two studies by Monk and Snow showed a significant decrease in the monthly cost of medications after surgery. These studies included 64 patients and 78 patients respectively. In contrast, the Swedish obese subjects trial demonstrated that surgical treatment resulted in similar total costs to conventionally treated obese individuals due to the increase in some medication costs. However, medication costs for diabetes and cardiovascular disease were lowered after surgery. The goal of our study was to assess the impact of gastric bypass surgery on projected lifetime cost of medications that treat hypertension and diabetes in the single-payer VA healthcare system. The VA system is unique for several reasons. It's mostly older male patient population, the VA's computerized patient record system that allows us to longitudinally follow many factors such as dosage of medications and presence of comorbidities very accurately, and all patients are subject to the same drug pricing. This was done through a retrospective electronic chart review of patients who underwent ruin y gastric bypass at the Palo Alto VA in a six-year period. We identified the pre- and post-operative medications for these patients and calculated the lifetime cost of medications based on the patient's life expectancy. The cost of blood glucose testing supplies was not included in the study. The, the pre- and post-operative drug costs were compared using the student's paired t-test. The lifetime cost of medications was calculated by multiplying uh, the cost of antihypertensive or diabetes drugs for each patient by the patient's specific life expectancy. These are direct costs paid by the VA. Life expectancy was determined across age and gender using CDC life expectancy tables and was then adjusted using the Framingham Heart Studies BMI specific survival. 102 out of 106 patients in the study underwent laparoscopic ruin y gastric bypass with a mean age of 52 and mean BMI of 47. 77% of the patients were male, which is congruent with the VA patient population, and the excess weight loss was 69% at one year. 
83% of the patients had hypertension, and 57% had diabetes before surgery. At one year after surgery, hypertension had resolved completely in 44% of these patients, and diabetes had resolved completely in 80%. The projected total lifetime cost of antihypertensive medications per patient was $1,039 before surgery, but it was reduced significantly to $286 after surgery. These costs were for all patients with hypertension. Interestingly, there was even a large reduction in costs from $1,349 to $513 for a subset of patients in whom hypertension persisted or improved but did not resolve completely after surgery. These two subsets of patients were compared and they were similar with regards to age and BMI. However, those patients with completely resolved hypertension after surgery had lost significantly more excess body weight at 76% than the patients in whom hypertension persisted or improved but did not completely resolve. They had lost 62% and this difference was statistically significant. The projected total lifetime cost of diabetes medications per patient was $10,505 before surgery, but it was reduced significantly to $1,139 after surgery. These costs are for all patients with diabetes. Again, it was interesting to find out that there was even greater cost reduction from $22,427 to $5,697 for the subset of patients whose diabetes persisted or improved but did not resolve completely after surgery. These two subsets of patients were also compared and they were similar with regards to age and BMI. Those patients with complete resolution of diabetes after surgery had lost 68% of their excess body weight uh, versus those patients whose diabetes persisted or improved. They had lost 62% and this difference was not statistically significant. We were able to conduct this study in the VA healthcare system, which is unique for its national computerized patient record system, and where all the patients are subject to the same drug pricing. The study showed Ruin Y gastric bypass is very effective for durable weight loss and resolution or improvement in hypertension and diabetes. It also leads to significant cost reduction for medications to treat these comorbid conditions. And these cost savings are greater, greater even in the patients whose hypertension and diabetes persisted or was not completely resolved uh, after surgery. So these economic considerations are significant for tackling a growing problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take now questions, please. Central microphone. Uh, Phil Shower, Cleveland Clinic. Congratulations on a very important uh, study on the effect of bariatric surgery on, on health care costs. And your study, like about a dozen others, have all shown very similar significant benefits in uh, the cost of care. Most studies show a return on, on investment or, or break-even point in about three to four years and beyond which there is a significant cost savings. It's quite puzzling, though, that despite uh, this overwhelming evidence of a cost benefit, uh, today most, if not, um, if not, well, most insurance carriers still don't offer bariatric surgery as, as a covered benefit. Uh, I think that uh, the overall cost savings analysis may actually underestimate the true cost savings. You look primarily at hypertension and diabetes while they are very costly chronic diseases. Uh, you didn't look at some of the other issues, sleep apnea, dyslipidemia, all of which have significant uh, medical costs or other treatment costs. So I wonder, you know, were you able to look at some of these other medical conditions? And perhaps the biggest cost savings is not the savings in medical treatment, but the reduction in complications of ineffectively treated disease. Uh, for example, the big ticket items such as dialysis, coronary bypass surgery, you know, hip surgery, and others. So we were able to look at the potential savings of these folks who had resolution and reduction in these major complications. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shower. Those are some great points and a very important question. Um, 
we decided that we were going to focus specifically on these two diseases just because they affect so many of our morbid patient population at the VA. Uh, there have been other studies that have looked at uh, the, co the cost of uh, caring for other associated illnesses such as obstructive sleep apnea. And in one of those studies that I mentioned that had looked at the cost of uh, drugs before and after surgery, they had taken those into account and they showed that there was a 68% reduction in the total cost of medications and those supplies after surgery. Um, as far as uh, looking at uh, the costs associated with unresolved uh, diseases, you're absolutely correct. Uh, most of the studies that have looked at the cost effectiveness of gastric bypass surgery uh, have shown that it's cost effective, that it's going to increase the patient's life expectancy, and it's going to decrease the morbidity and mortality that's associated with all those comorbid illnesses. But we did not look at those specifically. There is another question. Are these cost differences offset by the requirement of patients to be placed on PPI medication? Um, sorry, so the question is cost differences offset by requirement of patients to be placed on PPI medication. So actually, that's interesting because in the Swedish uh, obese subjects trial, they showed that the cost of medications were equivalent for the group of patients that had surgery versus those that had the conventional treatment, which was medical or behavioral modification. And the reason for that was the increase in the cost of medications such as vitamins, uh, medications for anemia, and also GI-related medications, including PPIs. Uh, again, in our study, we looked at hypertension and diabetes and not other uh, comorbid illnesses. However, uh, in the studies that were done by Monk and Snow, they did look at all medications, and they showed that there were significant cost savings. Okay, there is another question from the floor. Yeah, Dr. Felix from California. Do you have any idea what the conversion factor would be from VA dollars to real dollars since the numbers you showed me far underestimate what my one-year cost for our patients is? So it would be very valuable for us and for the real world to know what, if there is any real conversion or at least an eyeball that we could get into. A great question. Um, I think that it's, there's probably a way to find that conversion factor. I don't know it off the top of my head. And I agree with you that these are pretty conservative estimates. And the cost savings in real life or you know, non-VA patients probably would be greater just because the VA as a single governmental entity can negotiate uh, drug prices. And I, or we would think that they're lower than what uh, someone with private insurance or someone with, without insurance would be charged for those medications. There is another question. It's in the computer. The cost of anti-hypertensive drugs and diabetes, uh, uh, anti-diabetic medication seems low. Where these generic wholesales or some other reduced cost meets? these medications. Right. Again, I think it's because the VA can uh, get these drugs, uh, uh, you know, at wholesale price or at a special rate. Um, and so they are conservative estimates. Uh, at the VA, whenever generic medications are available, that's what's given to the patient. Thank you. The last question, please. Thank you. Himpens from Belgium. We've been doing laparoscopic obesity surgery for over 15 years, and unfortunately what we're seeing now is that lots of patients who got rid of the diabetes actually develop new diabetes and need new procedures. And did you take into account the, the um, evolution of costs with time? And uh, do you think that at one point uh, that cost reduction will be much less? That is a good point. Um, we did not look at that. As I said, we looked at uh, the cost of medications for these two diseases. We did not look at uh, post-operative complications, long-term complications that would affect this cost saving. Thank you, Dr. Giasi.